the power of a great smile. The smile that makes another soul smile. It's contagious. It's beautiful. It reflects positive energy, great health, and individuals will pay thousands and thousands to have a whiter and straighter smile. And it's to help them with more opportunities in life, for jobs, relationships, and even networking. Welcome to the cult of nice tea. But is it that nice? Teeth are an essential part of our body, but they're also crucial for our appearance. They can make or break our smile, affect our speech, and even influence our self-esteem. For many people, having straight and white teeth is a good sign of hygiene, health, and beauty. Keeping your teeth and gums healthy is super important to prevent the risk of future problems, and to maintain this is to brush your teeth twice daily and check up with your dentist regularly. But what if the obsession of the perfect smile and the perfect teeth has gone way beyond than just your oral hygiene and it's become more about personal preference than health concerns. It's also a cultural norm that promotes the idea that having nice teeth is a marker of success, attractiveness and social status. And have we taken the idea of healthy teeth to a next level? So I'm here at Define Clinic and I'm here with Dr. Shabri and I'm getting my teeth professionally whitened. So I actually won this through a giveaway and thank you Define Clinic for being able to gift this to me as a giveaway prize and here I'm able to try it for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to ask Dr. Shabri more about teeth whitening and dabble into the world of the cult of whiter teeth. Hi guys, my name is Shabri. I'm a dentist here at Define Clinic. We're based in Beaconsfield and we've got Abby in today to talk about her whitening experience. She's also going to ask me a few questions to share some information with you guys. Uh, about teeth whitening. So let's go see how my whitening treatment went and you will find out at the end of the video. Good morning, so today I'm a bit sleepy but uh, early morning but I couldn't miss out on today's appointment because I'm right now at Define Clinic and I'm ready to see Dr. Shabri for a whitening kit and this is the one that I'm doing. This is Enlighten and I wanted to get my teeth whitened and then this was the one that was recommended over here and apparently this one is really good for whitening but reducing the amount of sensitivity because I know that is a very common problem and I'm really excited to get it done. So basically they scanned my teeth and they took pictures like this and then afterwards in two weeks time I'm going to collect a kit looking like this and they scan my teeth because they give these really specific trays and then so you're going to get a whitening kit all done at home and then we'll see what happens from there. So my teeth in the before photos, it was a bit more on the yellow side, mm -hmm. especially like where the canines were. Mm -hmm. I want to ask like, what are the most common colours for the natural teeth? Mm -hmm. So we've got a scale here of a variety of different shades of natural teeth. So we call this a natural spectrum of tooth shades. Uh, the most common colours that we see are A3, and A2, which are quite yellow undertoned shades, but that's when someone has not done teeth whitening before, we'd expect them to be one of these two colors. Because teeth are naturally more on the yellow side, like if it's more on the yellow side, is it a sign that your teeth are unhealthy mm -hmm. or is it a health concern? Mm -hmm. So it depends on the cause of the discoloration. Uh, if the teeth are yellowing through use of tobacco or tooth wear, so where the enamel's been lost and exposing them the dent in which they layer underneath the enamel, or eating disorders which can lead to tooth wear, or potentially even plaque calculus buildup, then yes, definitely the teeth are, are not as healthy as we would want them to be and they're not in optimal health. Equally, if the, the yellowings come from genetics, so potentially hereditary darkening of the teeth or ageing, which is a natural ageing process, or dietary, then potentially the teeth are still healthy. So I just have my Enlighten bag that I just got from Define Clinic. So, so far I've been into the clinic two times already. The first time was actually to scan my teeth and that was really cool. It's all a 3D scan. And then after the scanning, they send it off to Enlighten. But this is the one that Define Clinic recommends and this is the one I'm going to try. So here we have inside, we have three things in here. The first thing I have 
It's actually my 3D scan of my teeth. So it's a 3D model of it. I'm not going to show you this. It's for my own personal use. And then we have this one. This is actually a little case containing the whitening trays. So after the 3D scan, this is what I get. These two little trays, very clear, very flexible as well, but they mold exactly to the same shape as my teeth. And I have one for the top and one from the bottom. And that is what is going to hold my teeth whitening gels. And then it's going to go directly onto my teeth. And then we have this kit and this is the Evolution 3 home kit. And everything that I need is inside this kit. And inside there's a syringe of 10% carbamide peroxide and another syringe of 16%. And then they also have these 12 desensitizer swabs. This is my first time whitening, professionally especially, and let's see how this goes. So stay tuned till the end of the video. This idea of having nice teeth as a marker of attractiveness, success, and even social status is actually reinforced by something we call the halo effect which is a cognitive bias that causes people to perceive attractive individuals as more trustworthy, competent and likeable than their less attractive counterparts. So what is the halo effect? The halo effect is a cognitive bias that occurs when a person's overall impression of someone is influenced by the perception of one specific trait or characteristic of that person. Essentially, it's a tendency to judge a person as good or bad in all aspects based on a single trait or behavior. This is the halo effect and it's subtly influencing your thoughts without you realizing. It's a phenomenon where if a person has one positive trait, like being conventionally good looking, then we assume they must have other positive traits, like being intelligent or kind or successful, even if we've just met them and if we have no evidence to support that. The halo effect can be super powerful in many aspects of your life and it can influence decisions like hiring a person for a job, marketing and even in personal relationships. It can lead us to overlook flaws or negative qualities in a person or objects because of one positive aspect or it can cause us to overestimate the abilities or potential of someone or something based on a superficial characteristic. Shabri, you have amazing teeth and I want to <laughs> ask you, did having nice teeth and being in the cult of nice teeth affect your daily life and your career? I would say 100%, especially now in my, my profession and day-to-day -day life, I would say it, it boosts my self-esteem um, and I don't have you know, any concerns about me speaking to people. Hmm. Um, I, so, so I think definitely 100%. I also notice um, that people will comment on my teeth quite often, which just shows the impact of having nice teeth and that people do, do make impressions and uh, form opinions based on a smile. So Shabri, you've heard and seen a lot of teeth transformations. Mm -hmm. What is the most common thing that patients come to you to have their teeth transformation, to have the coat of nice teeth? I'd say from my experience, the most common reasons why patients come to me is either with a dental health concern, so that could be them experiencing pain, um, worried about cavities, or they've noticed bleeding gums, for example, and they've got a specific concern they want me to look at. And the second most common is then patients coming in who just want straighter, whiter teeth, and it's more of an aesthetic concern. So is teeth whitening harmful because it's got a lot of like bleaching ingredients in there? Like, mm -hmm. What do you think? So it can be harmful depending on where the product is sourced from. Also, if you're not using it correctly or over whitening your teeth, potentially, yes, there are some harm uh, and, and dangers to the teeth. But if you are seeing a dentist and having a, a regulated product which you're whitening with, then there's enough cl clinical research to prove that it's still safe for your teeth. We use a peroxide, which is a very low concentration. If it's safe, it's legal in the UK. And people do ask me, is it damaging or what's the consequence that the whitening has on my teeth? And it's quite similar to as if you were having a can of Coke. So one can of Coke is the same effect and has the same damage that the whitening peroxide has on your teeth. So really little, and as long as you're using it correctly, we can manage then the harm on the teeth and make sure that it's safe. So what are the common side effects to teeth whitening? So if you're using the whitening correctly, the only side effect which we notice is sensitivity. Yeah. It's very well documented um, and we know that it is a side effect of whitening. Uh, the reason why is because the enamel is porous, which means that the peroxide is actually penetrating through the enamel. It oxidizes the stain of, of, on your teeth. As you know, you're a chemist, when oxidation happens, it's 
exothermic, which mm. means it releases heat. The temperature of the tooth rises, and that's what leads to the sensitivity. As, as the temperature rises, then the teeth teeth become dehydrated and when they're dehydrated they feel more sensitive but the sensitivity experience shouldn't outlast the whitening you know course of treatment so if you're whitening for two weeks we expect your sensitivity not to linger much longer than that and the research shows that the teeth will rehydrate within two days of the last day of whitening. Research has shown that people with straight and white teeth are more likely to be hired for jobs promoted to higher positions and receive better salaries. They're also more likely to be seen as intelligent, friendly and competent, even if they don't have these traits in reality. This bias can lead to unfair advantages for people who have the privilege of having good teeth and discrimination against those who don't. Many people who have crooked, stained or missing teeth have reported experienced prejudice, bullying and discrimination in different aspects of their lives. They may feel ashamed, insecure and excluded because of their teeth and may avoid social situations, job interviews or even dating opportunities as a result. This can have such a significant impact in their mental health, well-being and just opportunities in life. So why don't we ask Abby, how was your experience with whitening? Uh, it was your first time doing it, you never whitened before. Yeah, this is my first time whitening and I think the first time I did it, when I did the 10%, I saw a big change already mm -hmm. and then all of my teeth evened out. Mm -hmm. And then I already noticed when I was taking selfies and being in front of the camera as well, I felt like a lot more confident mm -hmm. in my smile. But now that I used the 16% and then finished that, my goodness, the it's like glow in the dark to me. <laughs> it's very bizarre. But I feel like there is that twinkle when you smile in front of the camera and mm -hmm. I think it's really uplifted me a lot. That's so good. Do you feel you're used to your reflection or do you think that was quite a big change that you had to adapt to it or is it quite seamless? I'm still not used to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, the thing as well. I think, you know, when people get cosmetic treatments, they don't know for sure what to expect when they look at themselves in the mirror after the treatment. Um, and sometimes they, they might need a bit of acclimatisation or time to get used to the way they look and you just said you're not used to it. But do you feel like it's brought value to you in your life? Um, I think it has actually and I think I feel more, um, you know when you put on a nice lipstick or some eyeliner mm -hmm. and you feel that nice like twinkle, like you feel perked up. With the teeth, it's just already there and then you already feel perked up. Bit of bam boom. Yeah. <laughs> and are you happy with the results? Yeah, I'm really, really happy and thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, cheek retractors in Abby's cheeks just to get a clear view of her teeth and do a photo and compare her teeth to a shade guide. This is a review appointment to see how white she's gone. And then BL1. Visual BL1. Beautiful. They look a lot more even. Mm. Especially like, because I used to have really yellow canine. Are you happy with them? Yeah, I love them. They look so nice. So, that's natural spectrum. These are the bleach shades. You, your lower teeth are lower canine, which are usually quite dark, are B1, mm. which is where we expect you to go with the home whitening. Um, upper teeth are going to be L4, so you're between these two shades. So these are like Never natural. Never natural, but that's what we expect. Oh. You know, someone who's done whitening, not everyone, but when you whiten your teeth, you can go up on the scale to even lighter shades, which are the bleach shades. Where was I before? There. So your starting shades are those, those two. Whoa. So you, with your, how many weeks? Three weeks? Yeah. Of whitening, you've gone all the way up the scale up to here. Whoa. Which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, eleven shades lighter. That's crazy. In just three weeks. I want to do. Yeah. So I expect your teeth to stay this colour for a, a year. And then when you do your protocol, so keeping up with it, mm. um, you need to do one night's worth of whitening every three or four months. Amazing. Amazing. Such a nice result. Thank you. Your teeth are really nice. <laughs> I joined the cult. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of us. <laughs> so just to wrap this up, what would be your final advice to my subscribers if they are thinking of getting their teeth done or teeth straightening or teeth whitening, any treatment, what would you say? I would say you've got nothing to lose. Obviously, I might be a bit biased. I'm in the profession and this is what I do day to day, transforming smiles. But I would say definitely speak to your dentist or drop us 
you know, a comment um, and we can answer any questions. I see the impact that transforming teeth has on my patients' day-to-day -day lives. Really, the benefit can be zero to none. I'd say it's super important to do your research and uh, properly look at the dentist that you go to, um, investigate and get the information that you need to make an informed decision. Make sure you're going to someone reputable for what, for what you want. So if it's whitening, implants, straightening teeth, go to someone who has got cases and can show you their cases, their work, um, and make a smart investment in your teeth. Thank you so much, Dr. Shabri and Define Clinic for providing such a good experience and giving me a really warm welcome to introduce me to whitening teeth. So just to wrap this video up, I just wanna ask you one more question. Do you think that being in the cult of having nice teeth is worth it? Or is it something that society has normalized to be a standard of beauty? By all means, decide wherever you wanna go and whatever makes you feel confident. And if you're super curious about teeth whitening, by all means, just go for it. In the end, I think what really matters is focus on the things that really, really matters to you. Whether it is about self-care and having something that boosts your confidence, as Dr. Shabri said, or whether your passions lie between the work that you do, to even the passions that you enjoy. Don't let the idea of the cult of nice teeth or any beauty standard that is out there define what what you are or even define what you're worth or even your identity what's most important is what makes you feel good and confident in your own skin and remember let's reach to as many people out there who want to share a safe space to open up and join our heart to heart conversation see you in the comments down below if you enjoyed today's video then check out my next video about the unrealistic standards of beauty from victoria's secret so click over here and i will see you there bye